So you need to hit a moving target in your game. Maybe something like archer hitting enemy with an arrow or someone throwing a rock or something. This is one of the common problems that you will stumble upon if you are making games. This is a topic I personally struggled a lot in the past and during development of new game I needed to solve this problem again. So I googled it and found a few code samples. One of them was actually working, but this time I decided to go line by line and trying to actually understand each line of code. So I googled more and found different solutions to this problem. But it was hard to find step by step explanation that was not too hard to follow and I spent few days thinking about this in my free time. There are a number of approaches that you can use to find aim of your projectile and I will share the easiest approach for my opinion. It all comes down to this. Variables that you know are attacker position A, target position T and target velocity vector V. And V is constant velocity, meaning that the target does not have any acceleration. The formula I am showing does not take this into account and generally it will cover most cases. If you need to take this into account, you will need to add this into final formula. Also you want to adjust projectile speed, so you know that value to S. And you need to find point X where the projectile hits a target. You have three vectors right here. Vector A, T, basically aim from a target to target. Vector T, X, representing target movement from start point to end point. And vector A, X, that represents trajectory of a projectile. And A, X equals A, T plus T, X. So here it is. These three vectors are the solution of a trajectory equation. Now you only need to find point x. And the last variable that we need to find x is time. The time target takes while traveling from t to x is equals as the time projectile takes while flying from a to x. So they both started their movement at the same time and ended intersecting each other. And length of the vector Rx is basically distance traveled by projectile. And distance is speed multiplied by time. So length of vector Rx equals S times T. And vector Rx equals AT plus TX. Let's say AT equals Q for more simplistic view. And vector TX is basically target speed multiplied by time. The same time projectile takes to hit the target. So length of the combined vector Tx plus At equals length of the vector Ax, which translates to length of the vector V times T plus Q equals S speed multiplied by T. And that's almost it. I know this may not sound like the most simple way to find aim that player needs to shoot projectile at, but Look how it's clearly represented by these three vectors and few simple equations. And now we have an equation with only one unknown. Let's say that vector vt plus q is vector y and we can represent its x and y components. And now we can use vector length equation and end up with this. And we can get rid of square root by square both sides and we will end up with quadratic equation. General quadratic equation looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, in our case time being x. And we can solve this by calculating discriminant. And if discriminant greater or equal zero, quadratic equation roots solves like this. Why there are two roots? Let's get back to our graph, more simple view of it. A being position of attacker, T current position of target, dotted line future positions of target and solid line past positions of target. Now if we draw a circle around attacker with radius of speed times time, we got two intersection points, one in the past and one in the future. If your game is not about traveling back in time, 
you should only consider a position in future represented by positive x. You remember that I mentioned if discriminant is greater or equal zero, so if it's negative, it basically means that projectile speed is lower than speed of your target and you will almost never hit it in future or past. So just to simplify, you can keep all your projectile speed greater than the speed of target they are trying to hit. Remember that when you will configure all these values in your game. Now back to equation. You can simplify its look even more by using dot product. I mean it looks very clean in code when you represent a, b and c of quadratic equation. Now add discriminant equation and you found time. And when you have time you can found x by multiplying target speed by time and adding target original position. Here you go, the most easiest way to find trajectory of a projectile hitting moving target. At this point equation does not take gravity into account. If you want to fix this, you need to make few changes into final velocity. This approach keeps projectile speed on horizontal plane and adds additional speed to compensate for gravity. It generally works well, but if you need to include gravity into projectile speed, you need to add it into original equation with three vectors. So you basically need two variables. First, compensate for gravity during time projectile is flying. And second, compensate for vertical position delta between attacker and a target. And just set projectile vertical speed to their added value. I think you are pretty tired of math at this point. So let's look at demo project I made. You can download it for free and use this formula in your game. You can just copy code and believe me that it works. Or you can spend few minutes and see a beauty in this equation. I mean, who cares, just Ctrl C and Ctrl V the code. So here's the demo. Yellow cube is attacker and green cube is target. You can point and click to move target. Small red cubes are arrows intersections with target position. You can change attacker range and arrow speed. Just play around with values and see how it works. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my Twitter where I share cool gifs from a game me and my team developing right now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.